It's hard for people to be themselves. They don't like themselves. They don't like what they are, and so they, they like to pretend that they're something more exceptional. You know, but what people really seem to enjoy is people who don't do that. People seem to really enjoy people who just work at being a better person and being better at life. You can learn a lot from someone about how much attention they spend on other people's failures, right. how much time they spend pointing out other people's failures, and how little time they spend reflecting on their own. Yeah. I'll be the first guy, you know, if I fuck up, if I get angry at something I shouldn't have got angry with. I, I pride myself in, in calling myself out because a lot of people have a hard time defining themselves. They define themselves by failure because they failed. But I'm like, you're not your failures. You're you. Okay? Your life is a series of lessons you've learned. Now, if you just dwell on the failures, like that's not, that's not healthy. It's not smart and it's not empowering. What you got to do is look at those failures and go, well, now you know what not to do. But you're not that. You're yep. you. You know, you could have done the stupidest fucking shit ever, but it's not you. It's not you. You're you're a different thing. You're the the being that's experiencing all these failures. And if you know that they're fuck ups, then you've learned. Okay. If you repeat them over and over again, well, then I can't talk to you. I mean, that's the bright side of tragedy. So when you come through it, you you really will have an appreciation for the moments without tragedy. You don't really feel it unless you, you get, unless life burns you, you don't really feel it. Understand that you can struggle and you can, you can realize that sometimes when things are really hard to do, you think, oh my God, I got to stop doing this. But once you do it and you complete it, you have a satisfaction, this sense of satisfaction that you did something really difficult that is irreplaceable. I think the idea that's important is action. Do things. Yes. Actually do things. To procrastinate and sit around and debate things forever before anything gets done. Yeah. There's a there's a proper balance though of enough action and enough thinking. That's what I like about physical pursuits, man. You you find out who the f you are. You know, you find out whether or not you're that person who can keep going. Whether you're that person who who is consistent. So many people they start off like I'm gonna run a mile a day and they run a mile a day for a couple weeks and they fuck off. You know, it's consistency. This showing up when you don't want to show up, forcing yourself to do things you don't want to, but then reaping the rewards. I think also stepping away from the hum of civilization is good too, because whether we like it or not, we're caught we're caught up in the hum of civilization in a in a way that it's almost uh, impossible to measure. It's happening to you if you're in traffic. It's happening to you when you're around large groups of people. There's a constant inundation of, uh, of input from other folks. And when you're in the woods, one of the first things that you realize, especially when you, sat, you sit down and you look out over a, a large ridge and valleys, you see the mountains behind it, you realize this stuff doesn't give a f about me. Right. It's been here long before me. It'll be here long after I'm gone. Perspective. Yeah. It, it, it's the ultimate perspective enhancer and you know it's just you just look around you just see these things that are out here hustling just birds looking for shit to eat and animals looking to eat a bird and you know and then other birds flying around looking for animals that are you know eating <laughs> yeah. on the ground it's crazy it's a it's it's something that you, if you're if you're not accustomed to it it's not a normal experience for you uh, when you get out there and you, you soak it all in and you, you are in the forest and you are in nature, it's very humbling, very humbling. Just, it just puts it in perspective. Like you're just a part of this insanely huge ecosystem mm -hmm. and these, these cities and this hum, this unnatural thing that we've created that we really haven't adjusted to yet. It's not good to spend that much time in that because also you can get caught up in the way everybody else thinks. And they're not always necessarily thinking in a way that's beneficial for you or for them. I don't think we're programmed to be steady and stable because I don't think uh, there's never a time in human history where life has been like super peaceful and easy going. Like you have these little kind of breaks where no one's coming over the hill with a sword and a fucking <laughs> gang of barbarians. The orcs, the orcs yeah. are not reading yeah, they're for not, a little while. So you get a little break and, and that's part of what people appreciate about life is those breaks. But you have to have the chaos too. And I think it's kind of built into the system.
that there is always going to be this up and down. And I think there's, that's it's also built into the way you interface with life. You know, you're not, you're not always going to feel great. You're going to have weird days, you know, I, but those weird days where things are shitty, one of the things it does is it really makes you appreciate the good days. No and if, I think if every day is too good, that's the problem with people that are on like certain medications that sort of make everything a seven or a six all day, every day, la, da, 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 da. It's just gray and pale and boring. Yeah. And there's no ups and no downs. There's no nothing. It's just flat. I'll and take yeah, I'll take the life of the poet, the ones and the tens. Those yeah. screaming, blistering tens yeah. and those fucking heart wrenching ones. Like, yeah, yeah. for yeah. sure. I'll sign up for that. What else are we gonna do? Try and just ride out the middle ground like that? Oh, that's just less interesting to me. There's a lot of lessons in those ones. You know. The biggest yeah. ones. You come out of those like a different person. Like you you learn things. Your mind has to seek discomfort. It has to seek these difficult tasks. You have to enjoy it. And you have to figure out a way to make your mind enjoy those things. And some people it comes easy and some people it doesn't. Some people some people it takes a long time. I always tell people the best thing you could ever do is force yourself to a schedule. Just write it down. Like today I have to do an hour on the treadmill. I have to do an hour. No matter what. Even if you're fucking walking on it you're doing an hour on a treadmill. The next time you're going to do it, just, okay, you did an hour and this is the amount of miles you got in. Next time you're going to, you know, add three miles, put, put an extra three miles in that one hour and just keep doing things like that. Write down today. I'm going to do a hundred pushups and I'm going to do a hundred sit-ups and I'm going to do a hundred chin-ups. That's today. And then force yourself, force yourself to adhere to a schedule, make a Monday, Wednesday, Friday workout schedule. Give yourself some time off, you know, like don't, don't even crush yourself to the point where you can't do it. Make it so that you really appreciate those Tuesdays and Thursdays. But on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, you're going to fucking get after it. And this is what you're going to do. Most people just try to go work out. And you're kind of aimless. And you show up. And you, like, you pick up the jump rope. And you jump a little rope. Maybe you hit the heavy bag a little bit. Maybe you do some curls. But you don't really have an aim. You know, and that's why people like to hire trainers. Because a trainer will tell you what to do. Well, you can tell yourself what to do. If you don't have money for a trainer, you don't even have to have fucking equipment. You know, with bodyweight squats, sit-ups, chin-ups, push-ups, you can kick your f***ing ass. You could give yourself a brutal full bodyweight workout. And you could find these for free on YouTube. There's a ton of them. There's a ton of these bodyweight workouts you could do. Just force yourself. Write it down. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I'm going to do 100 push-ups. I'm going to do 100 chin-ups. I'm going to do 100 sit-ups. Even if it takes me all f***ing day. Even if I have to do 10 and 10 and 10 and keep going all day. Just that's what you do. Do 10 push-ups, take a break for 20 minutes, do another 10. But get those 100 in. You got to have discipline. That Motivation's cool. great. I love it. I love music. I love uh, watching a David Goggins clip online or Cam Haynes or, yeah. or, or, or Jocko Willink or any yeah. of these savages. There's so many people out there. You could, you could watch one of their videos where they tell you what to do and you just get fired up and you want to go do it. But that's not always going to be there for you. No. Sometimes you got to just... You got to decide. Check the box. This is what I'm doing every day. Yeah, you get Rain used or shine. to doing it. Yeah. This is what I do. This is what I do.